Hi, I'm Matt. This one is for kite instructors. As you can see from the title, this is about uh, teaching with short lines. I'm gonna talk about uh, why we do it, what are the benefits. I'm gonna talk about some of the limitations that we're up against when we use short lines. And I'm gonna talk about how we use short lines. It's not just about slapping short lines on the kite. If you don't have uh, the techniques adapted to the tools that you're using, you won't really get the full benefit. This right here is a six meter kite. Okay, uh, it's on five meter lines. This is my default length that I usually use with most students as long as they have enough wind. And that's about how far we are from the kite. So first of all, let's look at some limitations to using short lines. Uh, a big one is not every kite works well on short lines. It depends on the design of the kite. Uh, we use Air Rush school kites, DNA and lithium progressions which work just fine on short lines. Another limitation is when you're right in that marginally low range of wind, 12 to 13 knots, where it's kind of tricky just to get the kite up there and keep it there, then you'll probably do better with a bit longer lines. In that situation, I'll take my students on a bit longer lines, maybe an eight meter line, even a 12 meter line. And again, I'm talking about those marginally light conditions. If you've got anything more than 14, 15 knots, if you've got solid wind, five meters is plenty. I, there are people that use down to three meters. I don't personally. And speaking of three meter lines, just for fun, here's a guy riding on three meter lines. Here's Sam Guest from Tantrum Kite Surfing. The first one, I would make sure that I was learning up to the point I was riding. Now this obviously changes once you're actually on the board and riding, but up until that point, through the water start, through first ride, you know, through getting onto the board, all that stuff, body dragging, all those other bits, upwind body dragging, I would make sure I was on short lines. The beauty of using very short lines is not only that it reduces the potential power of the kite, but that it greatly minimizes and compresses the power range between maximum and minimum. This makes it, yeah, safer, but also much easier for both you and the student, and much faster to get your student through all those very important basic skills, control points, techniques, of controlling the kite until they're at that golden moment when they're ready to put that board on their feet and do their water start without crashing and burning and coming back to the beach half an hour later in a tangle if the water start doesn't work. If they're on short lines, they have much less of a worry in the back of their mind that if something goes wrong, if they lose control of the kite, if they make a mistake on their launch, if they crash the kite on the water, they have much less worry about getting dragged down the beach, uh, getting in a tangle. If they have to do a self-rescue, much easier on short lines. We know that being in a more relaxed state means that we can assimilate information faster. If we're tense, our brains slow down. We know how this works. One of the things that we're thinking about throughout the lesson is the tendency of people to tend to pull the bar in. So when we're tense, we're much more likely as an instinct to pull the bar in, especially when things start to go wrong. Uh, this guy here, for example, if you look at him going across the beach, he's got so much power in the kite, he's afraid. Instead of pulling his quick release when he should, as he hopefully has been taught, he has to pay a much higher penalty, not only in terms of danger, but just in the time that it takes for him to sort everything out and get going again. So one thing that short lines allow us to do is to give a student a much bigger kite much earlier in the lesson without having this fear or this danger. One of the most important skills that a student needs to have in place by the time their water's starting is to be able to control that power at the edge of the window. Being able to use short lines eliminates the need for a trainer kite. Uh, those two-line trainer kites, we were using them 20 years ago. In my opinion, those kites are a waste of time. I've seen people spend an hour or two with their students on there. We use them to help teach the student where the window is, but the problem with those is uh, a two-line trainer kite 
flies completely differently than the kite that they'll actually be using. When your trainer kite back stalls, we give it a great big tug on the bar to get it back to the edge of the window. Exactly the opposite reflex we want to be putting in our students. So yeah, trainer kites, I never touch them. Uh, my students first are on a six or an eight or maybe a 10 meter kite on five meter lines. I pass it to them. They're holding that kite above their head while they get used to it. And you've just saved your student an hour of pretty much wasted time. Practically speaking, we've been able to get huge time savings by using short lines right through the whole first part of the process. Not just because five meter lines tangle less and when they do, they take a lot less time to tangle, but a body dragger in the water is gonna get pulled downwind, much less when they're on short lines. So they have a lot more time to practice all their things that they're working on before they get to the point where they need to come back out of the water and walk back up the beach. So all that time spent sorting out the lines, walking up the beach is much better spent piloting the kite uh, and learning techniques. There's also a lot less damage and wear and tear on a kite when you're using your short line because they're not going to be tomahawking the kite onto the water or onto the beach if they still have short lines. One of the things we always do in the first lesson on the beach is to do the kite recovery where we teach the student open the quick release let the kite fall down onto the sand and work their way up the safety line to get to the kite. Uh, if you're on five meter lines you're not really going to damage the kite so much. One of the best things about short lines and we were kind of forced into this and started experimenting with this maybe 12 13 years ago when our beach started to get smaller you can do a lesson in a much smaller space and that's a huge benefit if you look at your beach and the beach is only seven meters wide uh, if you don't have your five meter line techniques you can't do the lesson this way we have a lot more access to a lot more places where we can do our lesson uh, so really nice to have those short lines for working in small spaces when you've got two students sharing a kite and you're doing a beach lesson and they're learning their launch procedures, they're learning how to tune the kite, you can be right two or three meters away from them, talk to them both at the same time, they're both benefiting from the lesson. So that's another time to save. It's not just about do you have space to raise your kite. Remember, a kite with 26 meter lines is going to have a really big drop zone, close to a thousand square meters. Uh, the smaller you go with your lines, uh, the less area of responsibility you have. When we're on short lines, it's also easier to teach our students, and this is a really important thing that they need to be getting before they're ready to do their water start. Look at the big picture, see what's happening on the other side of the kite. So what do I look for to do on short lines? So I know they're ready for long lines. The students need to have a good launch procedure, doing all their checks, go out, come back, land their kite okay. They should be able to relaunch the kite in whatever conditions they're in. If they need to do a self-rescue, they can do that by themselves from start to finish, come back to the beach efficiently. Uh, they need to be able to be aware of what's around them. I'm looking for, do they do a shoulder check before they change directions? Do they look around them before they relaunch their kite or do their water start? Can they uh, body drag and navigate in all directions, including that nice high upwind angle? Uh, they pretty much need to be able to body drag circles around their board because that gives them a 100% success rate for getting their board back every time. Now's a good time to get them used to just whipping that kite around as much as they want, squeezing as much power as they can out of short lines, practice some power strokes between 10 and 2 o'clock, link them together. They need to get comfortable with that. Can they put the board on the feet by themselves and start to focus some power strokes to simulate the water start? And of course, if they crest their kite and lose their board, can they get it all back together into that water start position without a whole lot of struggle and time lost? Then we can say, okay, here's some longer lines. We'll set the board aside for a few runs, explore that bigger wind window a bit, learn how to make effective power strokes, whether large, medium, or small, learn how to link them together and focus the direction. Okay? Now that we've isolated all those skills, and worked on them separately, we can put them together for an effective water start that's not gonna waste a lot of time or end in a headache. I've got a good friend who's been teaching all sorts of ocean sports for 30 years. He puts it to the students this way. You have to earn those longer lines. So if you have a good power stroke and you know how to use it, you don't need long lines. You don't need 25 meters or even 20 meters. A lot of our students are up and riding on 10, 15 meter lines. Of course, we need a proper good school board for this. It has to be wide enough. The great thing about this is your students have much more control. Uh, they're using a lot less space on the beach. 
and they're far less of a danger to themselves and the people around them and everything's in a bit more relaxed atmosphere. This is, you know, this is something that affected me because when I was learning, I learned on full length lines, big kite thinking, I need the power, I need to practice with this power because this is what I need to learn to ride. No, I spent so many days being flung over the front of the board as I practice water starting or practice body dragging. I just touch the kite in the water and suddenly the kite rolls inside itself. I can't relaunch the damn thing. I'm sent back to the beach. I've spent half an hour resorting my lines out because they're in such a mess. This doesn't happen on short lines because there's not enough lines to get tangled. There's not enough power to pull me over the front so I can perfect the technique that I'm practicing before I add the power. And again, at this early stage, you do not need the power. So that would be my number one tip. So if your student is practicing the water start and they're getting pulled over the front of the board again and again and again, this is a good indication that they have way too much power and not enough control. You need to go back and help them fill in some gaps. Now, we have heard some pushback from people about using this short line system. Uh, I welcome that because it gives us the chance. In fact, it forces me to take a close look at how we do things, see where I can or can't justify my position, find faults, improve things. I'm especially happy to talk with other experienced instructors who have some knowledge about this because they've actually tried it and experimented with it a bit and learned how to work around it. Then we can learn from each other and we both benefit. Most of the difficulties people have with the system has to do with the way the kite flies when it's on short lines. And a lot of these can be attributed to those two points I mentioned earlier. Your choice of kite and are you trying to do it in wind that's a little bit too light. One point that gets brought up, the wind higher up is stronger than the wind just above the ground. We call this the wind gradient. Now the question is, how much stronger is this wind 10 or 15 meters up? As it turns out, this, the wind gradient, has been studied and measured. Here are some wind speed measurements at different heights above the ground. Once you get more than about one and a half or two meters above the ground, that difference in wind speed is negligible. Maybe one or two knots difference between two meters high and 10, 15 meters up. So my friend said to me the other day, sometimes I need a little bit longer lines so that I can get enough power to pull both me and my students out through the waves. And yeah, he's right, especially in these light winds. Now, if the issue is having enough power to pull you out through the waves, again, one of the great things about short lines is that we can put a much bigger kite on them. So instead of a six or eight meter kite on longer lines, I can give them a 10 or even a 12 on short lines. That's gonna give me 20, 30, 35% more power. A kite on short lines moves faster. You might say it's more responsive or even twitchier, less so, if you've put a bigger kite on those short lines. On the one hand, a slower moving kite is going to be a bit more stable when it's sat still at the edge of the window. But once you start to lose control of it, it takes much longer to bring it back under control and stabilize it at the edge of the window, which is one of those points that they have to learn along the way. And like the other points, unless we're dealing in this marginally light wind, if they can't do it on short lines, they pretty much won't be able to do it on long lines. Say you're about to teach in some marginally light conditions and you have a choice of gear. Let's take a look at these two kites. They're both six meters. The kite on the right is an Air Rush DNA. Great school kite, flies well, can take a beating. Because it's a school kite, it's got reinforcements. It's a little bit heavier than the other kite. Take a look at the wing tips also. You can see that the green bandit has much wider wing tips where the DNA comes more to a point. So the bandit has more surface area close to the tips. This is the area that's supporting a lot of the weight of your kite when it's sitting at the edge of the window at 10 o'clock. So the green kite on the left will probably help you still get a good lesson in one or two less knots of wind. Okay, one last thing. You cannot put short lines on a kite with a two-line flag-out system. And here's why. If you take a look at this two-line flag-out system, 
you've got at least three, four meters until you get to the base of the Y. And then from here to the kite, these two front lines need to be far enough that you're not pinching the kite. So the shortest you can get on a double flag out system is going to be something like 10 meter lines. You need to have either a single line flag out system or a fifth line flag out system. Then on your, then on your single flag out system, uh, your kite will still be able to kill its power. Okay, we'll end that there.